Thank you for coming to class today, for carving out a little bit of time out of a busy day to do a little practice together. I am Anne Cassapini, and tonight's class is an extra gentle yoga class. It'll be an hour long, and we normally don't go to the floor in this class, but tonight I might um, show you options, an option on the floor, and an option where you can use two chairs if you'd like. And of course, you're welcome to skip any poses that don't feel appropriate for you today. I'd like you to have at least one chair and a strap if you have it and two yoga blocks. So bring out all your yoga props for tonight if you have them and an extra chair if you have an extra folding chair in case you don't wanna to go to the floor. So we start every class with a little centering then I'm going to talk a little bit about our theme. Tonight, the focus is knees, how to take good care of your knees so that they feel more comfortable and we avoid injury or we can heal them as well. So please take a moment to sit comfortably on your chair or block or floor and bring your awareness into your body right now. Bring your awareness into the foundation. What is touching the floor? Let the weight be balanced balanced, symmetrical. The weight is balanced under your hips and under your hands resting on your lap. Lean back a little bit so you're more in a receptive mode rather than a doing mode. And lengthen your spine so the tailbone draws down, the base of your skull telescopes upward. Your chin is comfortable, about parallel to the floor. And perhaps close your eyes or three quarters close your eyes to draw your focus inward. Sense your body now, how are you feeling? Without judgment, just notice. Welcome yourself to the mat, to the practice, and welcome each other. And now rest your awareness on your breath. If you can breathe in through your nostrils, please do so. Breathe out through your nostrils if you can. Notice the quality of your breath right now. Again, without judgment, just like a scientist, just noticing with curiosity, how's the breath? And then please listen into the sound of a bell to remind us to come to this moment right now. Not to sit uh, for a moment, I wanna share with you some wonderful, uh, just two short paragraphs about the knees from this wonderful book, You Don't Need to Have Arthritis in order for this book to be a great resource. So first of all, the knees are the largest joint in the body. Many people don't know that. And it's interesting because most joints don't have three bones that make it up. Our knee joints are made up of the shin bone, the tibia, the kneecap, the patella, and the thigh bone, the femur. So it's very interesting joint. So here we go. How do we resist or at least minimize the wearing down of our knees? Joint health is primarily maintained by the circulation of joint fluid. This is a really excellent viscous lubricant that provides oxygen and proteins that are needed for joint repair. And also, this fluid carries away anything like waste products of, me of metabolism that your body doesn't need. Yoga, by moving the joints to the extremes of motion, but not farther than the extreme, helps this process continuously. So movement is good, the movement of yoga. And because the knee is so much affected by movements in the neighboring joints, especially hips, sacroiliac, lumbar, ankle, the yoga that we offer for those areas can really protect the knee a great deal. When you have flexibility in your hips, there's less demand on the knees. And the opposite of that is obviously true. If you're tight in your hips, your knees have to work harder. Strength in the lumbar spine and abdominal musculature reduces the load on the knees and as stated flexibility in the ankles cushions the impact that the knees might otherwise absorb. So. If knees are area an area of your concern, 
a, a, a variety of poses that are good for all your joints are really gonna help you. So let's go to the mat now. I wanna take you to the mat and we'll do first a couple of little exercises to kind of see where we're at. And then I'll give you some tips and we'll do some poses. So let's come to the mat now. Hmm, my heater is working well. I will take off my top layer. Yay. Okay, so stand. You can have your chair here in case you need to hold on. But do make sure the four feet of the chair are safely on the mat. Please bring your feet outer hip width apart and point the toes forward. Good. With hands on your hips, go ahead and bend your knees a little bit and straighten. And then bend your knees and important thing to learn, this could be like the most valuable thing for your knee joints, is how you place your feet matters. The position, the grounding of your feet affects the joints above, the ankles, the knees, the hips. So really let's bring the awareness to the feet. Press the big toe mounds down. Go diagonally across to the outer heel. Press that down on both feet. Keeping those two points pressing, press the inner heel as well as the pinky toe mound. So keeping those four points pressing, now lift and spread all your toes without losing the connection of the base of your big toe. Feel that, feel how the muscles firm to your bones, the inner and outer arches of your feet lift. So Adish, I'm gonna ask you to admit that late student that's arriving right now, if you can, that'd be great. And then release. Oh, here, let me just admit this one student. There, okay, fine. So that is going to build some strength in all the muscles of your feet and legs. That's an important thing is how you place your feet. Now let's play with that a little bit more so you, get, you develop your awareness. Shift your weight forward a little bit. See what that feels like. Shift your weight back a little bit. See what that feels like and find the place in the middle. Shift your weight side to side and find the center. And then bend your knees again. And you can even hold on to the chair just for an experiment. Put more weight on the inner edges of your feet. Notice how that brings your knees together. That's not so nice. And then bring the weight to the outer edges of the feet. Notice how that brings the knees to point outward more on diagonals. That's not great for your knees either. So we wanna learn to keep the weight balanced on the medial edge, the inner edge, and the outer edge of your feet. Good. Now, let's just do a little thing that's kind of fun. Without looking down at your feet, just march in place, random movements, random movements, random movements, random movements, and then stop. Now look at your feet and notice what your tendency is. Part of yoga is becoming aware of our own tendencies and then tending to the tendencies so that we can learn more optimal alignment, more optimal positioning of the body. So notice, is the weight more toward the outer edges of your feet or toward the inner? And can you bring some balance? We usually set the medial edge first, the inside edge first, and then the outer edge. Good, yeah, good food for thought. Now, I wanna just show you from the side. So watch for a second. The placement of your hips is important for your knees. So a lot of people will take the hips forward like this. You see how it kind of crunches the lower back, it bends the knees and it's, it's just not helpful. <laughs> so now the opposite of that is this, the hips move too far back. This can hyperextend the knees going beyond straight and that can put stress on the knees when you're too far back. So we wanna find a place in the middle. So try that, try that with me. We wanna find a place in the middle where the side of your ankle is in line with the side of the knee, is in line with the side of the hip. So let's play with that a little bit. First, take your hips forward. See what that feels like. Notice it bends the knees. Then take your hips back too far, too far, too far. And notice that pulls the back of the legs. Mm -hmm. And now draw the tailbone down until you feel a corresponding lift in your belly. And you'll see side of ankle, side of knee, side of hip in a more optimal alignment. Yeah, good. All right. Now, there's so many details we can talk about and we will, but we're also gonna keep moving. So sit on your chair a moment. I'm gonna turn this heat around. 
And what we're going to do now is something that strengthens your quad because the strength of your uh, thigh muscles affects the knee joint. We're going to strengthen the quads and also learn to track the knees well. The knees don't have much lateral motion. They really need to go forward and back. So sit to the middle front of your chair, holding on, lengthening your spine. And we're going to extend one leg out. Flex the foot, flare the toes. Lift the leg up, no higher than the other thigh. Lower it down and bring it back. Other leg, extend it out, lift it up, lower it down and bring it back. Let's add the breath. Inhale, extend the leg out, you slide out. Exhale, lift the leg. Inhale, lower it down. Exhale, bring it back. Inhale, extend. Exhale, lift. Inhale, lower down. Exhale, bring it back. Once more each side or rest. Inhale, extend. Foot is flexed, meaning you're pulling the toes back toward your own hip. The toes are spread. Exhale, lift without rounding your back. Inhale, lower it down. Exhale, bring it back. Good, one more. Inhale, extend the leg. Exhale, lift it up. Inhale, lower it down. And exhale, bring it back. Wonderful. Now please come up to standing. All right. Now with your feet out or hip width apart, hands on hips to start, bow the torso forward and bend your knees. Now look at your knees. What is your tendency? Do your knees tend to fall in like that? Or do they tend to open out more toward the pinky side? Try to point the knees straight forward, the kneecap, the patella, needs to point straight forward over the base of the second toe, really that space between the second and third toe. So once you've established that, come to standing. Now inhale, lift your arms. And as you exhale, bend your knees, look at them. So your knees are really as wide as your ankles. Then inhale, come to standing, reach the arms up to the sky, exhale, lower. And if you're nervous about balance, you can always turn the chair around and face the chair. You inhale, lift your arms. You exhale, sit like you're sitting in a chair. Inhale, rise up to standing. Exhale, lower. Do check what your feet are doing. Bring them outer hip width apart. Point the toes forward. Bend your knees slightly. Root the four corners of your feet that we talked about. Big toe mound, inner heel, pinky toe mound, outer heel. Lift and spread all 10 toes. And now sit like you're sitting in a chair and take your arms parallel to the floor or hold on as needed. Can you feel all the work going on in your leg muscles, especially these largest muscles of your body, the thigh muscles? And then release the toes, press the feet into the floor, inhale, touch the ceiling, and exhale, lower the arms. Repeat that again while I let someone else into the class. Okay, good, nice. Let's do it together now. Rooting through the feet, inhale, lift your arms. As you exhale, sit like you're sitting in a chair. Then inhale, rise up to standing, exhale, lower the arms, good. Now, holding onto the chair with your feet outer hip width apart, I'd like you to bend your knees a little bit, slide the right leg back in a lunge. Root the inner edge of your front foot because the tendency is for that to roll out to the pinky toe side, so don't let it do that. Align the front knee vertical over the front ankle, Scoot your back toe, foot back enough that you can lift the heel, you see? So this is going to engage your calf muscle. It's also gonna open the front of your hip. Holding onto your chair, you're gonna bend the front knee. You're gonna lift your back thigh up, descend the front thigh down. Now, if you have uh, pain or recent surgery and you wanna modify this, you can bend the back knee a little bit. Yes, now for more challenge, you bring the shoulders over your hips. You can lift one arm, alternate that, the other arm is lifting, or max challenge, you can lift both arms. Good, now I'm gonna modify, I'm gonna bend my back leg because I've had a recent hip surgery here on that side. So I'm gonna modify that, but if you can, and you feel comfortable, you're gonna keep the back leg straight. And then hold on. Step forward and release. Good. March in place, let go of any tension you may have created and step your left leg back. 
Good, so feet are parallel. This is a parallel lunge. Bend the front knee. Look at your foot, be your own teacher. Look at the foot, how is it placed? Are the toes pointing forward? Is the kneecap, the patella in line, pointing straight forward over the base of the second toe, right? Next to that base of the third toe. Mm -hmm. Knee vertical over ankle. Scoot the back foot back a little more so that you can come onto the tiptoes of the back foot, you see? And that will engage the calf, the gastrocnemius. Yes. Bend the front knee any amount more you can. Lift your back thigh up any amount more you can. And you're bending the front. Mm -hmm. So you can stay here, working the strength in your feet and legs. More challenge. Bring the torso more vertical, shoulders over hips. Maybe you'll lift one arm. Alternate. Max challenge, both arms will lift. Keeping your awareness in the foundation, the way that you place that front foot, as I mentioned, affects the joints above and gives you more stability. Hold on, step forward and march in place. Good, let's loosen up the ankles a little bit more. So you can hold onto the chair, put all your weight on one leg, rooting into the four points of the foot, lift the other one and roll the ankle, just do circles. If you're tired at this point, feel free to sit down on the chair and do your ankle rolls from a seated position and go the other way. So again, if your ankle joint is stiff, your knee joint has to work harder. This is a, a nice thing. You can even do it in bed before you stand up. You're on your back in bed, let's switch feet. You can do ankle rolls like this while you're on, still in bed. Good, good. Reverse the circles, excellent. And now take your feet so that the heels are touching and the toes are gonna open out like that, mm -hmm, like a V can hold onto the chair, bend your knees, come onto your tiptoes, lower down through the heels, bend your knees and straighten. Good, now facing the chair, again, this is to strengthen your feet, your ankles, your leg muscles, increase your balance, improve your balance, bend your knees. My knees crack a lot, so you may have heard that. Come onto your tiptoes, Heels are lifted. Notice I'm holding on to the chair. For more challenge, don't hold on. Straighten the legs, heels are lifted. Bend the knees, heels are still lifted. Lower down through the whole foot. Now the whole sole of the foot is on the floor. You bend your knees and just bounce a little bit. Good, breathing, yes. And straighten the legs. Let's try one more time or rest. Continue to let your breath flow, never holding the breath. You're on tiptoes. Bend your knees, straighten the legs again, heels are still lifted. Bend your knees, lower down the heels to the floor. Keep the knees bent, feel the shins, the calves, good, and straighten. Excellent, now I'm gonna show you another thing that's very helpful for knees. So come to sit down on your chair, we'll do it sitting. Please sit to the middle or front edge of your chair. And this is, this is an isometric action. You're gonna take your hands to the sides of your legs, just below the knees. And the action for your hands and arms and lower legs is adduction, squeezing into the midline. But then against that squeezing into the midline, this imaginary line drawn down the center of your body, I want you to widen your inner knees, widen your inner thighs all the way up to your sit bones. So lower legs are hugging in toward each other from the knees up, widening out, try that. What you may feel is um, a widening at the bottom of the pelvis. Now you may not feel anything yet, if it's the first time you've ever done this, and then release. I want you to do it again, but don't hold your breath. <laughs> yes, it's, that's the tricky part. You're, you're thinking, you're concentrating, but let the breath flow. Hands are here, fingers pointing down. This can also be done standing up. I'll show you that. 
hug the shins in toward each other. This is adduction. And then widen from inner knees, inner thighs, all the way up to your sit bones, the bones that you sit on. Yeah, really good. And release and take a breath. Great. All right, now let's do a couple of standing poses with the back two feet of the chair on the long edge of the mat. So you can hold on if you like. If you're practicing without a chair, that means you know probably where we're going. We're gonna go into a, a warrior two and an extended side angle. So again, just to repeat myself, when we want healthy knees, yes, we want a good foundation. Yes, we want um, strong muscles. But we also need to open up the hips and open up the other joints in the body because they all work together. So let's do that with these standing poses. Standing behind the chair, you can hold on, take a wide stance of your feet, toes are pointing forward. I'll do opposite of you. So you, I'll open my left leg, you open your right. Like that, 90 degrees, uh-huh, good. Look down at your feet. Draw an imaginary line, please, from the front heel straight back. It's gonna bisect the arch of the back foot. And notice my back toes are turned in a little bit. And my back heel is widened out. All right, so we've got all that. We've set the foundation. Now bend the front knee. Look at it. Make sure the patella, the kneecap is pointing straight forward over the base of the second toe. Very good. Back leg is straight, front leg is bending. If you want to just stay here and just work the feet, work the legs, that's fine. You can hold on to chair or hands on hips, that's fine. Now straighten the leg. Now bend the leg again, that front leg. Lift the front arm, shoulder height, and straighten. Inhale, lift the front arm, bend the front knee. Exhale, straighten. Now maybe both arms lifting. Very good and straighten the front leg and lower the arms. Now, this time we're gonna hold it a moment. So gaze over the middle fingers of your front hand. Feel the four points of each foot. Big toe mound, inner heel, pinky toe mound, outer heel, feel, feel it, yeah, sense it. Notice what your knee's doing. Often the knee wants to fall into the big toe side, don't let it, keep your awareness. You can use your own eyes, just look. Be aware of what your knee's doing. Very good, and stretch your bones. Excellent, to release the pose, hold on. Straighten the front leg, parallel the feet and walk in. March in place, let go of any tension you may have created. I always like to wiggle everything out. <laughs> Take a wide stand, feet start out parallel. Open your front toes 90 degrees. It's actually your left toes. I'm doing opposite of you, I'm mirroring you so I can see you. Widen your back heel out. Now look down. Please remember to draw that imaginary line from the front heel straight back. It should bisect the arch of the back foot. This is your optimal placement for this pose. Now bend the front knee. Good, yes. Try to get the knee over the ankle. Now at first when you do this pose, you might have a shorter stance from front to back. But as you practice over months and years, you will develop the strength and the flexibility to take your back leg even further back and then you'll go deeper in the pose. So see what feels appropriate for you today. Kneecap pointing straight forward, yeah, and straighten. So inhale, bend the front leg, exhale, straighten. Inhale, bend, exhale, straighten. Can you feel how your hips are really on a diagonal? But the torso, it would be more parallel to a wall that's in front of you. So let's add the arms. Inhale, lift the front arm. As you bend the front knee, exhale, straighten. Inhale, lift the front arm, bend the front knee, exhale, straighten. Now try both arms if you can, if you're up for it. This is warrior two, Viravadrasana two. Very good, gaze over the middle fingers of your front hand and just check, how are your feet? your feet, can you feel those four points? How's your front knee? Stretch your bones, root into the floor. Mm -hmm. Feel the power in your body. When you're done, you can hold onto the chair, press down into your feet, down with your hands onto the chair, 
parallel the feet and walk in. Excellent, really good. And now take a moment to um, just roll your shoulders up and back and down. Roll the shoulders up and back and down. Give the legs a little rest. Mm -hmm. Good, turn the palms out. Inhale, lift the arms up. And now with strong feet and legs, you can look at them, make sure they're parallel, they're outer hip width apart. Make sure you know what they're doing. <laughs> Reach the arms up and then side lean. So you're gonna crescent the body. And then inhale, come up to center. And then over to the other side. Inhale, come up to center, exhale, release the arms. Good, nice. Roll the shoulders up and back and down and back and up and down. Good, now take a wide stance once again. We're gonna repeat the same foot and leg position as warrior two and we'll take it into extended side angle pose. So open your right toes 90 degrees. Widen the back heel out further than the toes. Bend the front knee. Now take your front forearm and you're gonna put that front forearm on your front thigh like a shelf. Your palm is up. I'm holding onto the chair for stability. Lengthen in the spine. There's a little twist in this pose. You might feel the, the torso revolving up toward the ceiling, the sternum, the breastbone turning toward the ceiling. Now you can stay here, holding onto the chair or to go a little further, the top palm faces the ceiling, stay strong in your feet and your foundation and your legs. And then swing that arm forward and up over your top ear, hug the ear to the bicep, to the inner arm, stretch everything. So I'm gonna ask you to put a little more weight in the outer edge of your back foot and then stretch the whole top edge of your body, gently breathe. Really good. To come out of the pose, you can hold onto the chair. Take the other hand, press down on your thigh bone to re-root, to re-ground, safely come up. Parallel the feet and walk in. Excellent. One more side. Please take a wide stance. You start with parallel feet, then you're gonna open your right toes 90 degrees. Widen the back heel out further than the back toes. Please bend the front knee. And now front forearm is on front thigh. Good, nice. Palm is facing the ceiling. Lengthen in your spine. So use your breath to create a long spine. Revolve the torso toward the ceiling. Your heart goes toward the sky. Uh-huh. You can stay here and just Work the grounding of the feet, the strength in the legs, the alignment of the knee pointing straight forward, not falling into the big toe side. Or you can get a little more challenge going with the top palm facing the ceiling. Pull that arm back behind you a little bit, then swing it forward over your top ear and stretch. Put some more weight into the outer edge of your back foot and stretch everything. Find the breath here. Gently breathe. So good, hold it one more breath if you can. And when you're ready to come out, hold on to your chair with your top hand. Look down to your big toe on that front foot. Press this bottom hand onto your thigh bone to root down and ground. Feel more strength as you come out of the pose. Parallel your feet and either toe heel, toe heel, toe heel, come together with your feet or just step together. Excellent, that's really good. All right, now. Let's take the chair and do half dog and quarter dog. So you wanna have some flexibility in your hamstrings. That's also nice for your knees, very helpful. So holding onto the chair, step back into an L shape. Bring your feet outer hip width apart, bend your knees. Tilt your pelvis forward so that your sit bones rise up to the ceiling and you have more concavity in the lower lumbar spine. Good, lift your upper arms, your upper chest. The backs of your ears are roughly in line with the backs of your arms. Inhale, bend your knees and look. 
Please make your knees as wide as your ankles. Do not let the knees fall into each other or overly point out. And then you're gonna straighten the legs. Inhale, bend. Exhale, straighten. Inhale, bend. Looking at your feet, I want you to root the four points of your feet and lift and spread all 10 toes or as many toes as will cooperate in this moment. Sometimes those fifth and fourth ones don't want to cooperate, so that's okay. Just feel that, feel how that energizes the muscles in your legs to firm to the bones and hug the knee joint, protect it a little bit more. And then release the toes and then slowly straighten the legs to the degree that you can. Mm -hmm. Now bend your knees, lift your head, lift your chest, and walk forward. Half dog. Such a nice feeling to stretch the spine as well as stretching the backs of your legs. When your hamstrings are very, very tight, it can pull on the lower back. So really we want to we kind of give we want to give everything, every part of the body a little bit of loving awareness, kind attention, so that everything works well together. Please turn your chair around. And now we're gonna go a little bit deeper in that down dog. Again, the four feet of the chair are safely on your mat. You come close to the chair, you hold on to the front corners. Now step back into an upside down V shape. Bend your knees at first and just use your own eyes. Look at your feet, make sure the toes are pointing forward. Bring some weight to the inner edges of your feet and to the outer edges of your feet. Send the sit bones up. You wanna get concavity in the lower lumbar spine. And then stretch everything. Stretch your arms, stretch your spine, the sides of your torso, and lengthen the heels toward the floor, but don't jam them to the floor. They do not have to touch the floor. If they go, they're fine. Gently breathe. Nod your head, yes. Nod your head, no. Good. Bend your knees slightly. Especially if you hyperextend, meaning you go beyond straight in the joint. And you want to keep a little bend in the knees. And think about the top of your shin moving forward. even as you straighten the knees back. So try that with me. Bend your knees a little bit. Get the top of the shin to move forward and down, even as the top of your thigh moves back. Yes, yeah, a little bit more mindful way to straighten the legs and you'll avoid hyperextending. Shins forward, thighs back. Top of shins forward, thighs back. Good and walk forward to the chair. When you get there, bend your knees, open the arms out to the side. Inhale, lift the arms up to the ceiling and exhale the hands in front of the heart. Good, let's take a seated twist now. So please sit to the middle front edge of your chair with your feet on the floor. You'll find your ankles under your knees. Your left hand can hold onto the seat of the chair or the sidebar. And we're doing the same size as each other. Mm -hmm. So feel your feet, the weight is balanced. For your, for your hips also, let the weight be balanced. The other hand, the right hand is gonna come to the outside of your left knee. Inhale, please lengthen in your spine. Exhale, gently twist. Starting from the lower spine, then the middle back the upper back, finally the neck and head go. But your knees stay pointing forward. So just make sure your knees are still pointing forward. And you can even retract your right thigh bone back into its own hip socket just a little more. Because sometimes that, that right knee wants to shoot forward and then the right knee is more forward than the left. So you retract it back and you kind of gently draw it back into its own hip socket. And here, just enjoy. You inhale, you lengthen in your spine. Exhale, twist, let go of tension. Feel like you're wringing it all out. Good. On the next inhalation, come back to center. Let's do the other side. Right hand can be on the seat of the chair or the sidebar. 
left hand to the outside of the right knee. Inhale, lengthen in your spine. And very gently exhale, let the lower lumbar spine twist, then the middle back, upper back, neck, and head. Every inhale, create some space between the vertebrae. Every exhale, you can stay there or you can go a little deeper into the twist without forcing anything. And now gently retract the left thigh bone a little bit back into its own hip socket. Gently breathe. Inhale to come out. Great. Now let's take a seated forward fold and then we'll do a standing forward fold. So your feet and your knees are gonna point out now in diagonal. And if you have a block, let's see, where are my blocks? Oh, I have it right here. If you have a block, you can put it between your feet. So I'll show three, uh, actually four variations of this. So the first one is your hands are on your thigh bones and you bow the torso forward and you can just stay right here. Or you can go deeper, hands are on a block. I want your hands to be weight bearing in this. So release the neck and head. Or if you have the flexibility, your hands can go directly to the floor. And then if you'd like to try the deepest forward fold and you want to lift your hips up off the seat, then you'll come up with the hips. Now parallel your feet a little bit more and hang over. Hang over. Release the shoulders, the neck and head. See how this feels for you today. Draw your tailbone down. You'll feel your navel lift up off your thighs. Release the torso on your exhales. Good, then bend your knees, hold on to the chair, sit down and very slowly come up. If you got dizzy, just wait. And then everything get used to being upright now. And gently breathe. Great. Now, while we're sitting, I'm gonna turn and face you. We're gonna do a hip opener. So sit to the middle front of your chair. And again, if the hips are very tight, it puts more pressure on the knees. So we wanna include some hip openers when we can. See if you can get one ankle, you could do either side, one ankle to sit like this across onto the other leg. Foot is flexed, meaning the toes point back toward its own knee. Spread wide the toes. Good. Rock it a little back and forth. Remember we talked about the synovial fluid in the joint, this natural lubricant that your body creates. So movement helps to release that. This helps the joint health. Cleaning out what the joint doesn't need, bringing it fresh nutrients that it does need. So just rock a little bit, good. Then lengthen in your spine. And if your body allows you to do it, you're gonna bow the torso in one piece, bowing forward. So leading with your sternum, not your chin. You bow forward, you'll feel this in the outer part of your hip, the outer hip rotators. Now, if this is very hard for you, you can straighten the bottom leg out a little bit so you're lowering the ankle a bit and that might make it easier for you and you bow forward to the degree that you can. Everyone is born with different hips. So, so be gentle with yourself, don't force anything, just breathe with it. How do you know if you're forcing? Well, if you've stopped your breath, your breath will tell you, your breath is the guide. So listen into your breath, gently breathe. Yeah, we just kind of hang out here for a little bit. And, and after a couple of breaths, sometimes the body gives you a message like, ah, oh, it's okay, you can go deeper. Or sometimes the body says, that's enough. Come out of the pose <laughs> and release. Now, if you can do the other side, it's going to be ankle to knee, yeah? I am not quite able to do that yet because of my recent 
well, I could say my new bionic hip. So um, you can just, I'm gonna just show you this way. Standing is a little bit easier for me, ankle to knee. But I want you to do it seated if you can. Just remember what we did on the other side in reverse. It's gonna be ankle to knee. And what's important, I'll just show you what, what I want you to emphasize from the side. I want you to flex the foot that's on top. This is a pointed foot. This is a flexed foot. So you bring the toes back and pull the pinky edge of the foot a little bit more back to, toward its own hip. When you're in that ankle to knee position like this, the toes are flexed, pulling back toward their own knee and the outer edge is pulling more toward the outer edge of its own hip. Basically, you're creating a, a mountain pose foot Tadasana foot, for those of you that know the name in Sanskrit, Tadasana. Basically, right, if you, like, here's what, what you could imagine. If that foot on top was standing on the floor, so I put a block here. Remember in the beginning of the class, we talked about the four points of the foot being grounded. So it's, it's you find that foot, even in this hip opening pose, you find that alignment. And that is good for your knee. Mm -hmm. And gently breathe. Good. Release. Come to standing, please. Have the seat of your chair facing you. Let's do another forward bend, but support it with the chair. Okay. So please come close to your chair. Bring your feet outer hip width apart, bend your knees. You're going actually, no, start with straight legs actually. And lift your arms like this to the ceiling. And then bend the elbows, release the arms down, chin to chest and vertebrae by vertebrae. Start rolling down the spine until your hands can touch the chair. Now this might be enough for you. See how your hamstrings are. Maybe come onto your forearms. If it already feels tight in the back of the legs, go ahead and bend your knees, inhale, bend, exhale, straighten. I want you to see if you can align your ankles under the side of the knee, under the side of the hip. So often watch the, the hips are back like this. That's not good for your knees. Or if it's too far forward, that's not great. So get that alignment, side of ankle, side of knee, side of hip. You can hang out here. Or if you have two a block, one or two blocks, and you're comfortable going deeper into this forward fold, let your hands be weight-bearing. Again, you can inhale, bend your knees. Give your hamstrings a break and your knees a break. Exhale, straighten. Inhale, bend. Exhale, straighten. And those of you that can take the hands all the way to the floor, you can be high up on your fingertips. Release the neck and head. Inhale, bend, exhale, straighten. And as you straighten, draw the tailbone down. You'll feel your belly lift up off your thighs. Taking a little weight off the tops of the legs. To come out of it, please bend your knees. You can bring your hands onto the chair. Look forward. Hands on hips, squeeze your elbows together, lift your chin out of your chest, slowly come up. And if you got dizzy, you could stay here in a yoga huddle. Or lift the arms up to the ceiling, palms together and bring the hands back down in front of the heart. Good. Now I did promise at the beginning of class that I was gonna show you something that you can either do with two chairs or you can go to the floor. So first, let me show you with two chairs and a strap. Um, and then I'll show you going to the floor. So feel free to watch me for a minute if you don't have two chairs. This is good. Uh, you put both legs up on the chair. And if you wanna go ahead and go to the floor, you can try this on the floor. Go ahead. You take your strap, and if you don't have a strap, you can use a scarf or a tie or a belt. And what you're gonna do is you're gonna bend your knees a little bit, 
and tilt your pelvis forward so you're rocking to the front of your sit bones and you draw the top of your sacrum in to the body more. Flex your feet, flare the toes, bend your elbows. Now slowly straighten the legs, pressing the back of the legs down toward the floor. So if you're right on the floor directly, the backs of the legs, the entire backs of the legs will be connecting to your mat. So this is a hand, good for your hamstrings, stretch the hamstring. If it's very hard for you, keep a little bend in your knees. And or if you tend to hyperextend in the knees, meaning go beyond straight in the joint, keep a little bend in the knees. Now, bend your elbows, bow the torso, and come a little deeper into the pose, if that works for your body today. Listen into your body, please. Eventually, over time, you know, your quads will get strong, you engage them, it feels like you're pulling your kneecaps up toward your hips, and that helps to straighten your leg. Spine is long, you bow forward. Good, really good. So if you're on the floor, enjoy the floor. Sometimes it's fun, like we feel like kids playing around on the floor together on our yoga mat. So that's always nice too, to get on the floor if you can. And then release. Excellent. So, so um, another thing you can do here is to put both straps in one hand and open the leg a little bit out to the side and come back and open it out to the side and come back. So this is abduction, abduction going away from the midline. And you can try that on the other leg. So if you're on the floor, you just kind of slide your leg over a little bit and then come back and slide it open and come back. Yeah, good, excellent. And release. Nice. Wonderful. Now. There are, of course, a lot more things we can talk about for knees and more poses we can play with. But for tonight's class, we've already done a lot. I like to end each class with a short meditation. So right now, make yourself warm and comfortable. You can sit on your chair for meditation. Actually, maybe I'll sit on this one. Mm -hmm. Or you can sit on the floor. Let's see, oh, and you know what? Maybe I'll come closer to the camera like I do sometimes. Yes, I will do that. So go ahead and put socks on or sweatshirt. Mm -hmm. And just before we go into the meditation, just to review. We were focusing a little bit more on knees tonight, knee alignment. The way that you place your feet on the earth really affects the joints above. So if, if that's the one takeaway from tonight's class that you can take, I will be very happy. Think about the four points of your feet pressing down, big toe mound, inner heel, pinky toe mound, outer heel. And just as an exercise to lift the toes. Yeah, while you're keeping the four, four points down. That will strengthen. You can lift and release, lift and release the toes. That will strengthen your muscles. Muscles of feet, muscles of legs, lift the arches. That's very, very good. Also, you're going to want to be aware of where your hips are. Are they behind the ankles? Are they in front? You're going to want to be aware of your hip placement in gravity in, in space. And those of you that hyperextend, you want to make sure that you don't go beyond straight. So sometimes you have to put a little soft, tiny little bend in the knees um, until, you know, to break that habit of jamming into the back of the knees. You can explore all this a little further in future classes. Um, but know that thigh strength is very helpful. Strengthening all the muscles, having some degree of strength, having some degree of flexibility, 
Um, so a variety of moves are very, very good to get that synovial flu fluid lubricating your joints. Okay, enough about that. Let's do our meditation. So sit comfortably or lie down. Lengthen in your spine, lean back as if you had loving hands on your back. You can just lean back a little bit. Close your eyes or three quarters, close your eyes. Gently breathe in and gently breathe out. And let's do a very simple practice tonight. On your in-breath, please say to yourself, just this breath. And on the out breath, just say to yourself, just this moment. Inhale, just this breath. Exhale, just this moment. Let's do that together for about four minutes. I'll watch the time and ring a chime when that four minutes is up so you don't have to worry about it. So begin when you're ready. Just this breath, just this moment. Just this breath, just this moment. Just this breath, just this moment. Now you can gently release that practice. Move any part of your body that needs a little movement. And to close our practice together, I invite you to bring your hands into this shape. It's Anjali Mudra, it's called. Fingers spread, thumbs into the heart. And gently bow to yourself for honoring your body tonight with a, what I hope is a nurturing practice and silently honoring each other for joining community in a beautiful evening practice. Namaste everyone, to see you soon. <laughs>